Some of the best summer beverages are even better with fresh herbs. Adding fresh herbs to cocktails brings in additional freshness and complexity and flavor, but it isn't particularly complex to do. Thank goodness, it's actually really very simple. Herbs are some of the easiest plants to grow, particularly when grown in large pots. Start by determining which herbs you would like for your favorite cocktails. There's a rather comprehensive list in the blog post, but for now, let's just talk about mint. It's of course a favorite for iced tea, but also for mojitos and mint juleps and cuba libras and so many more. And then there's sweet basil, another favorite for pesto, of course, but also for basil gimlets and gin basil smash and peach basil frosé and basil lemon drops. Then there's also rosemary and lavender and, and thyme and sage and so many more. But let's start with planting a few of the basics. Remember, herbs are easy. <clears throat> All you need is well-drained potting soil in large pots where they're easily accessible and get plenty of sunshine. Well-drained soil means that you must have holes in the base of your pot. I have found the best way to let the water drain out but keep the soil in is to cover the holes with a coffee filter. Easy, right? Add your potting soil. And then the second most important tip to, is to loosen the roots when you remove them from their nursery pots. The plants do best when their roots spread out, and this gives them a kickstart to do just that. So I potted one of each in my largest garden, garden pot that sits right outside my kitchen door. Basil is a bit greedy, and because I use a lot of basil, I put three basil plants all in one pot. They don't need to share the nutrients with anyone else. Now mint, mint should only be potted with mint. Mint is aggressive and will take over anything else it can reach. Now that we have our herbs planted, let's talk about how to use them in making cocktails. The first way is by muddling. Muddling is to herbs as squeezing is to fruit. I use a mortar and pestle to fairly gently push and then twist the mint and or basil leaves. This causes them to release their oils, just as you squeeze a wedge of lime to release the lime juice. The leaves are then added to the cocktails and typically shaken or stirred. Then second, you could add herb flavoring by infusing in simple syrup. Simple syrup is typically made one cup of water to one cup of sugar. If you are infusing an herbal flavor, you'll also add three tablespoons of the fresh herb. Now mix them all together in a small pan, simmer for 15 minutes, cool and strain into a bottle or jar, and that will keep in the refrigerator for two to three weeks. Third way is to use it as an aromatic garnish. Just add it to completed drinks. You can even wipe it around the rim of the glass um, to get some of that oil and extra flavor in. Now let's talk about setting up an herbal cocktail bar. In our lake community, casual summer evenings call for a casual bar setup. We like to offer a cocktail of the day, or maybe two, and then wine and beer. Other than that, it's BYOB. We don't try to stock a bar to meet all tastes. We like to use a bar cart in our brick courtyard next to the decomposed granite patio. This is where everyone comes and goes. The bottom shelf typically holds soft drinks and additional mixers, as well as a stack of bar towels. The next shelf up, holds additional glassware. I like to use stemless or short stemmed glasses that work for a variety of drinks. Our card has two drop down leaves that we may, can extend for more space as needed. And let's start with the most critical, ice. We're using an oversized insulated vintage ice bucket. Don't forget to set out ice tongs and scoop with the bucket. Tonight, I really wanted to play into the idea of summer herb forward cocktails. So we started with one of my faves, mojitos. To keep things simple at the cart, I like to frame a sign or instructions for making the evening special cocktail. In the case of mojitos, it's easy to make a small pitcher of the mojito mix and keep it in the fridge until guests arrive. Then all they do is follow the steps on the sign to fill their glass with ice, add the pre-mixed mojito, top it off with sparkling water and garnishes of lime and mint, taste it, and then adjust the sweetness and tartness to their own liking. Tonight, I want to embrace another herb and offer an alternative cocktail for those who don't care for rum. A two-sided rotating sign does the trick with basil gimlet recipe on the other side. <clears throat> for the basil gimlet, we swap out the rum with gin and swap out the mint with basil 
and eliminate the sparkling water. And that's it. So we have our ice bucket. Now let's add our two herbs. I potted a washed plant of each in vintage cocktail shakers just for the evening. Those went on the cart with a pair of scissors to snip. It just doesn't get much fresher than that. Now we add some barware. This is a great vintage set with corkscrew and bottle opener, jigger, and an ice scoop even. With fresh herbs, we always set out our mortar and pestle set for muddling. Then I have found that a long narrow tray to contain liquor and mixer bottles and a ball jar to use for a shaker really helps to keep the cart orderly with so many different people using it. Now that it's about time for friends to start arriving, I'll set out the pitcher of mojitas I pre-mixed and have been in the fridge keeping cold, as well as the bottle of simple syrup and the limes with the cutting board and knives. And then if I still have room on the cart, I like to tuck in a few flowers from the yard or a neighbor's yard. In this case, these extraordinary peonies came from our delightful neighbor, Sharon. What a treat. I hope this has given you inspiration for growing a cocktail garden and shown you just how easy it is to set up a bar on your patio or deck to welcome the neighbors during these long, beautiful evenings of porch weather. Have a great evening, everyone.